Hey y'all, hi. It's time for another episode of New Makeup Hot Takes and it's kind of a grab bag today because first of all, I started looking over Trend Mood 1, which is the account that posts about new makeup and that's where I source information for this video. And I'm kind of excited. I was like excited about makeup in an expansive way. It feels like there's been a little bit of a shift inside of me since I last filmed new makeup hot takes. And so that's causing me to be a little bit reactive and I have things to say about that or things to say because of that. And then I also feel like there are some trends going on. There's some weird things going on in new makeup and in me. We're gonna cover all of that because this is the video in which I. I scan the new releases with an eagle eye, with a gimlet eye, and just talk about what interests me and, and ignore everything else. If this happens to be your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome. My name is Hannah. I am really interested in aesthetics, consumerism, beautiful things at large. I prefer quality over quantity. In videos like this, I'm often looking for a reason not to buy things. If that's up your alley, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Video. New makeup, hot takes. New makeup, hot takes. Okay, first things first, the Pantone color of the year, peach fuzz. I'm only a little bit torn. I'm torn. At first I was like, yes, perfection, the dream. And then the more I looked at it, the more I was like, it lets me down in a couple of ways. The thing that's the dream is the imagery that they have put forth. This backlit peach, silky version of a dandelion fluff. These pale peach cattail type fronds of something waving in a sunlit field, a fantastical AI generated peach sheepskin covered couch with peach clouds swirling through the room. I mean, this I'm kind of into. And it, if that's the feeling of the color of the year, I get why that's what they picked. It's like a little bit escapist, warm and fuzzy, also futuristic in a way, with a little bit of a nod to the recent past in aesthetics, i.e. millennial pink. All of that makes sense. However, the swatch itself, the color itself, peach fuzz, Mm, it's like a little bit flat. I feel like there are probably colors to the left of it and colors to the right of it that are more nuanced that I would have been more interested in seeing selected. I feel like they could have gone a little bit more gray with their choice, a little bit more old gum, my friends. That and then the name. Did it have to be Peach Fuzz? I mean, that is just a really boring name for a soft peach color. So I feel like the Pantone Swatch Bard <laughs> let us down. That's apparently the name for a person who names colors. My dream job. I should be hired as a Swatch Bard. If anyone's hiring a Swatch Bard, just send me an email. Maybe I'll switch careers. If I stop showing up and filming, you'll know why. It's because I made an about face and became a swatch bard. So slightly mixed feelings, but I feel like the aesthetic inspiration that they're serving, which is kind of their reasoning, their visual reasoning for choosing this as the color, I support it. And I think that that's probably the most important thing, more important than the color itself, because what happens is people take the color as inspiration and they run with it in their own way. It's not going to be peach fuzz echoing through the months of the year. It's not going to be this exact color. It's going to be more the overall color concept. So a velvety gentle peach who's all embracing spirit enriches mind, body, and heart. I'm here for it. Okay, let's talk about lip oils as a trend. Old news. It's not as it's trending now, but that thing is happening where the trend started a while back and a bunch of brands are all very late to the game all at the same time. So it kind of feels like there's a second wave of the trend. I feel like that's happening now with lip oils and or hybrid lip gloss nourishing balm products products that are in a doe foot applicator screw top tube. More and more, I'm starting to think of lip products as being broken down into categories according to the delivery mechanism and not according to the name that they're called by marketing. So for example, balm, like a lip balm, can come in a pot format where you dip your finger in. It can come in a stick format where you screw it up and it's a little bit of a hard product like a bullet lipstick, or it can come in this too with a doe foot applicator format. And I just feel kind of on a practical level, the way that you interact with the product, that those are three categories. And even if they're all called balm, I make the distinction. The distinction I'm making here is that lip oil type products or liquid balms kind of in this format. And the example that I 
brought up here is the Clarins Comfort Oil because it was the first thing at the very top of the page when I clicked through Trend Mood and it was the first thing I thought of. I was like, oh. And then as I was scrolling down, I did see a bunch of other things like this, but this is the one that I'm using to talk about the trend at large because you know, you know an oil, a lip oil when you see one. I don't have to point them all out to you. My hot take is this, a lip oil can be so bad. It can just be literally like a thin, watery oil that might look and feel good when you first put it on, but then a couple of seconds later, it's disappeared into the ether, leaving you with kind of dry lips. I mean, maybe a little bit oily, but sometimes dry lips underneath a weird thin layer of like evaporated and wiped away oil. And then all the way on the other end of the spectrum, a product like this, basically a liquid balm that has oils enriching it, but isn't super pigmented, it isn't super sticky or glossy, can be so great. And I am kind of interested in that far side of the spectrum, and I'm no longer interested, as I kind of once was, in just a dribbly, wet, liquidy oil in a tube. But I tend to be much more drawn to the stick format balms. So upcoming, I am doing like a battle of the balms, battle of the tinted balms. I decided to review a bunch of them and I got all stick format ones. So I don't really know much about this format. What are the best? What are the best ones out there? Liquid balms or lip oils in this format where you dip the doe foot into the tube? Tell me what you think. Kind of along the same lines, Gucci. And I just have to talk about it because I have a somewhat tumultuous, but no matter how you slice it, passionate relationship with Gucci. Gucci, post it, get it together and deliver your lines. Gucci beauty. And now they're here releasing a plumping tint tinted lip gloss. And one of the shades is brown, Suzanne Brown. It looks so beautiful. Oh, but I just remembered one of the reasons that I decided to talk about this at all. As I've said many times before, I try not to read the comments on trend mood posts because that way madness lies. I mean, it will make you feel like there's nothing right with the world. The trend mood commenters are so negative and so vicious and just can only see the worst in everything in general. And then once in a while, I mean, I guess this is kind of an example of that, but once in a while, <laughs> it's very well done. The commenting, I mean, currently, and I don't know if this will be the top comment when you are watching this, but currently the top comment on the trend mood post about the Gucci lipsticks is 42 dollars to wear a lip gloss called Bertha. I just cannot. I live for that. Well done, Noelle, not Nicole. You really brought the wry humor today. Anyway, as Gucci does, they've named these colors Sadie Coral, not the one, unfortunately, in which I would be interested in Virginia Fuchsia, Suzanne Brown, and Bertha Pink. I wish it was Bertha Brown. That's something behind which I could really get. But, you know, it's Suzanne Brown. The color's beautiful. Maybe I'll review this. Plumping tinted lip gloss, I feel like can also go one of both ways or one of many ways. It can be really stingy, really sticky, make your lips all swollen and raw around the edge and make you look like kind of a hot mess actually with chapped lips, or it can be exquisite, especially if it's not sticky. I wonder which one this is going to be. I might wait for reviews. I often do. Often when I first see a thing like this, I'm like, oh, I'm chomping at the bit to swatch it or try it or review it or something. And then I just calm down I wait an hour and then I'm like, ah, I'll just wait for reviews and then I'll see if it's even worth me reviewing. I, I may be the second wave. Okay, this, this is an example of, the, I have one question about this, the Mac, this thing from Mac, which I'm not even gonna tell you what it's called yet because I didn't know what it was called when I first saw the image. I saw the image and I was like, I want that. It reminds me, the same thing happened with that Patrick Ta loose glitter in a cube. I wanted it because it reminded me of the olden days, like my original relationship with cosmetics back when I was in my early 20s and I was a tango dancer and I really didn't have much or any spending money ever. So I would acquire like a little thing like a little thing like this. And then I would just cherish it and cherish it and cherish it and love it and love it to pieces and use it up completely and then find something else to replace it with. And it was just like one thing at a time. But it was always these like glittery, sparkly goops and gels and stuff like that. So I saw this and it called to me, called to my past self. And I was like, it's Mac. And I've never been a Mac girl. I really don't have any experience with Mac. So I sat up and took notice because usually I'm not that compelled by whatever they're doing. And I was like, oh, it's a Mac thing. And it looks right at my alley and it calls to my past self and I'm so interested in it. Not really actively like I'm gonna buy it, but I it hooked me, you know? It hooked my interest. Here's what it is. Jelly slime all over highlighter. Jelly slime. Why did you have to do 
completely puncture my balloon, Mac, by producing the one and only thing that you've ever produced that kind of made me want it just based on looks. Why did you then have to call it jelly slime? I'm not interested in jelly slime. This light reflecting silky smooth formula comes in two exclusive small batch 500 of each shades. Oh, is it like one of those things where you have to buy it in two seconds or everyone else buys it? Definitely not going to do that. But I wouldn't have bought it anyway because jelly slime took the wind out of my sails. Oh, and I just threw this up here to show, to show something to myself. So I'm combing through all of these things, some of them exquisite things that I just don't even care to talk about, like the Louboutin foundation, the cover image for that on Trend Mood as I was scrolling, the bottles of foundation all lined up, took my breath away. I was like, what is that? And then I clicked through to see what it was and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> not gonna even, well, now I've mentioned it, but it's not a topic here because it's just, it's just a beautiful photograph. So I'm going through all these things and once in a while a thing will grab my attention and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? Maybe I want to put it on my face, you know, and it remains to be seen whether that means that I'll go and try it or buy it or whatever. But it, but I have that feeling. I see the image and I'm like, I want to touch it with my fingers. I want to put it on my face. Sephora Care, the Sephora Care line. Okay, again, here I'm getting myself in hot water again, checking the comments right away. I just can't seem to stay away. Thank goodness the top comment says, has anyone else never heard of the Sephora Care? Line. Like they're out here talking like it's been a thing all this time. That's exactly how I felt as soon as I saw this. I was like, am I a bad beauty YouTube content creator because I don't know what the Sephora Care line is? I've never heard of it. Anyway, I don't know what it is. I don't know what that means, the Sephora Care line. All I know is I saw this imagery of glimmery goop squeezing out of tubes and I was like, I want to touch that with my fingers. I want to put that on my face. It is called Make It Glow. Made for eyes, face, and body. Use it over or under makeup. Makeup. Yeah, it's exactly the kind of thing I like, a multi-purpose luminizer. And the reason I'm so into this imagery of this product from the Sephora Care line is that I've been really into Auric Glow Lust lately. I've been putting it on my cheeks, under and over my makeup, on my eyes. That's what this satiny glow is that you're seeing. I've been using it high intensity for a wet look shine. I've been using it low intensity. I've been mixing it with my blushes. I've just been using it as this hero all-purpose product that it is. And I've been so happy with the results. It's one of those products that has been rejuvenated for me by my declutter, by clearing things out. That's what's really getting me going right now. So I'm seeing something that looks like it might be designed to do somewhat a similar thing. And I'm like, oh, I love it. I love that kind of thing. But that doesn't mean that I'm gonna buy this. I already have the one that's great. I promise you. I mean, I don't know anything about Sephora Care. I promise you Auric Glow Lust is 10 times a product that this Sephora Care Make It Glow is. And I already have it. So it, it was just one of those classic situations of me reacting to advertising around the type of product that I already love and I know that I love it because I already have it. And so it creates this feedback loop that if you really follow it through to its logical conclusion, makes you realize that you don't need to buy the thing. If you don't follow it through to its, log its logical conclusion, if you get stuck halfway through that feedback loop, then you go buy the thing that you don't need that you already have. Okay, another crowdsourcing moment. Revolution, makeup revolution, brow thing. I don't need it. I I mean, well, I kind of do. That's what I'm about to ask you. It's not the makeup revolution one that's making me sit up and take notice. It is though kind of the shape of it. It's this diamond shape. The, the photography, I mean, this looks like it's photoshopped or AI generated or something. This, it, this doesn't look like photography, but whatever they've done to create this advertising image where it's very, very up close on the diamond shaped tip of a waxy looking brow pencil. It looks like it, it's satisfyingly hard and pointy and makes a very thin line. And it has these ashy colors, ash brown, dark brown granite. I saw that and I was like, I want it because I have been craving a hard, pointy, very ashy black or very ashy dark brown, not warm toned at all, brow pencil. I think the Kamiko one in the darkest shade, instead of the second to darkest shade, which is the one that I have, could be the one. So I might get that. I might go ahead and just get that and see if that's the one. But I also wanted to ask you all, what fits that description? Because I just haven't been out here comprehensively testing brow pencils. I've gotten more into filling in the front of my brows a little bit since I did that video about the makeup that everyone was obsessed with. And now I want a better tool for it. And so I saw this and I was like, on site, this looks like the ideal tool for it. I don't know anything about Makeup Revolution's brow formulas and whether this actually would be. It just reminded me that I'm meaning to ask you. Tell me, 
And maybe I'll do some sort of battle of the brow pencils, or maybe I'll just inform you along the way of my progress, which is what I usually do. Okay, another feedback loop discussion, quick discussion of, I feel like I've said this so many times uh, in new makeup hot takes, but it kind of never gets old for me because if you're trying to evolve your relationship with shopping and beautiful things, if you're trying to grow as a person, as I am, <laughs> in terms of my relationship with beautiful things, with beauty products in this case, actually we can be really specific. My relationship with makeup, shopping for it, wanting it, buying it, using it, owning it, right? My relationship with makeup has been evolving over the course of these years that I've been on YouTube and I'm still working on evolving it. If you are trying to do that while still keeping one foot in to the makeup world as I am, like keeping a finger on the pulse pretty much of what's going on, paying attention to new releases, working, steeping oneself in this world, which you might not work in the world. You might just steep yourself in it because it's your hobby, or you might do it because you sort of work in the world. Whatever the case, if you're steeping yourself in it, but you're also trying to evolve your relationship with it, you're going to come up against the same little kind of Gordian knot of logic and desire over and over and over again and always have to tease it apart and let the let the strings fly free over and over and over again. It's not like you do it just one time and then you're cured and you never have to deal with that again. So it makes sense that I say this over and over again in New Makeup Hot Takes because in my life, in my relationship with new releases, the same little loop occurs over and over again and this is what it is. A product like this comes out, like the Caudalie, what is it? The Caudalie Vino Crush Skin Tint. I see the advertising imagery, stunning. The little swipes of cream, the beautiful tonal bottles, the promises of the product, that it's skincare and it's also makeup. Even in this case, the lightest shade actually looks a little bit gray, a little bit neutral, like it could possibly maybe work, especially because it's a skin tint. So each shade is designed to suit a wide range of skin tones. Tones. I see it and I want it. And I'm like, <gasps> and all of me sort of goes, <gasps> my eyes start sparkling and I have hope in my chest. Hope springs eternal for products like this. For some reason, it just gets me every time. However, I don't like skin tints. In practice, I don't like them. Maybe once in a while I've found one that I can kind of work with, but usually something that's a tinted lotion, especially if it doesn't set down at all, if it doesn't transform on the skin and become pretty sturdy, drives me crazy throughout the day. If it's transferring to things, my hair is sticking to it. I am really drawn to the idea of real looking skin, light coverage, super natural looking makeup, all of the glow models that they have in the advertising for this type of product, they always look the way that I want my makeup to look. They apply makeup in the way that I want my makeup to be applied. And I think that they are advertising to a demographic that wants the same thing that I want from makeup in terms of the finished product and the overall aesthetic. But I've learned that for me to get that finished product, to get that aesthetic, I can't go this route, this tinted moisturizer route. I have to go a totally different direction, which is to use a very full coverage product and just manipulate it and shear it out so that it's not giving me too cakey of a finish. Those full coverage kind of serious heavy duty makeup type products tend to be the ones that set down and stay bulletproof throughout the day and don't drive me crazy. And also that adequately cover the blemishes that I do have and the scars that I do have to cover. The feedback loop is this, or the cycle, right, is this. me seeing a thing like this being, oh, and all of a sudden, all of these magical rainbows bloom in my head, and I'm like, I should get this. I should review this. It looks so beautiful. The lightest shade looks like it might even work for me. And then there's the come down from it where I'm like, wait, Hannah, you don't actually like this type of product. The promise that the advertising is selling does fit with you, but the method for getting there that this product is selling does not work for you. And then I have to just let it go and move on. So for the umpteenth time, I am saying to you, a tinted moisturizer has been released. I saw it, I wanted it, and then I had to remember that I don't actually want it. For me, it's tinted moisturizer. For you, it might be something else, some other type of product that it gets you every time you think you want it, but you know from your own experience that it never works out that way for you. And as long as you can bring that into your conscious mind and like hold it there, it will save you from making those bad purchases. Oh my gosh, we have to talk about this. Natasha Janelle. Berry Pop Collection, Valentine's Day Berry Pop Collection, because all that Natasha Denona ever seems to do with these Valentine's Day releases is to release pink stuff, like 
bright pink, saturated pink stuff year after year. And it's not just Valentine's Day. It's like every time there's an occasion release, uh, a specialty limited edition little palette like this with the really beautiful highlighting formula and then these beautiful blushes and sometimes a cream product. And I want to love it so bad. It's always pink. Or if you really dig through the annals of Natasha Denona and you try to find something that's not pink, then it's a tan brown that leans very orange. There's always this saturation of a bright color in the undertone of these products, this type of product from Natasha Denona that makes it not work for me. And I remember when I did that comprehensive Natasha Denona review, I determined that the formulas of these products, these face products I love, and the colors just, they're isn't anything on offer for me from Natasha Denona. And I was like, can we just get something kind of richer, muddier, more neutral, more mucky, rather than these bright pinks and oranges in face products? So when I saw this, I was like, is it happening? I was like, is it finally happening? Because a berry like this, I mean, I think maybe it's not happening because when you actually look at the color, it's the swatches. When I scroll through the swatches, it's like, it's pink. It's just pink. It's a slightly darker pink rather than being a slightly more mauve, muckier or gray toned pink. It's just dark pink. Oh, the pictures of the models with these really glossy highlighted cheeks, that skin. I love it. But I can get that look by mixing Auric Glow Lust with any of my blushes and kind of painting it on. I really can, that very wet look. I mean, I did a, a sort of toned down version of that today. It used very little blush and, you know, I didn't lay it on as thick as I could have. But I don't need, it doesn't need to be Natasha Denona necessarily for me to get that look. Although the powders, that really wet look shine from powder products that this promises, she does do it kind of like no other. And the middle, the highlighter, the pink highlighter in the middle with the really beautiful kind of chevron ombre pan. The thing that saves me as someone who's trying not to buy too much more makeup in the year of 2024, the thing that saves me is that when it really boils down, it's just a dark pink. And I know that that's not my favorite color of blush. It's better than the very, very bright peach, orange, or saturated peachy pink of yesteryear for Natasha Denona. But I don't think it's up my alley enough for me to go out and actually buy this. However, it's a departure for her, and I am happy to see that. I really do like the way that it looks. It sort of made me catch my breath when I first saw it. I was just like, ooh, it gave me a little makeup-loving tingle. And whether or not I determined that it would suit me and whether or not I decide to buy it, I appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to talk about Lastly, with the help of a couple of new product releases, I'm going to return once again to my favorite topic, saturation versus desaturation. Because here's the thing, and it's not about complexion. I mean, ultimately it is, but it's not about complexion products. I saw this new release. I was going through the new releases. I saw this lipstick release looking really classic, straight up, delicious, like creamy colors of a lovely lipstick formula in a beautiful spectrum, right? It's the Makeup by Mario, which I've never tried, but people seem to really love it. Makeup by Mario Satin Finish Lipstick. Lipstick, a classic silky creamy satin lipstick with a soft sheen, creamy ultra comfortable color, just like a really great straight up daily wear bullet lipstick. It looks beautiful and the lips of the models look very beautiful. The finish looks uniquely beautiful and I love lipstick. So this is the kind of thing I click on it always when I'm preparing for a video like this to see what the colors are. So I clicked on it. I started scrolling through, looking at the swatches, looking at the colors. They're all very saturated colors. And that's what I'm often saying about foundations and concealers when new ranges are released. I click on them and I go through and it's like, it's not just that there isn't a pale, desaturated, neutral, slightly olive color. It's not just that there's not a match for me. It's like I'm looking at the entire shade range. I made a whole video about this, which was weirdly underviewed. Maybe it's because no one wants to hear me talking about this and maybe I shouldn't be doing it now. I'll put it in the description box. It's uh, my free advice to the beauty in industry. I really described what I mean by desaturation and saturation in that video. So if you're confused hearing me talk about it, it, click on that video because it's it has like graphs, graphs, imagery, illustrations, the works. But this is what I always end up saying. I looked on the entire shade range from light to dark and every color, even if they are including olive in their range, every color is ultra saturated. Sometimes they will have olive undertones, very yellow undertones, and very pink undertones. But whatever the undertones are, the tones and undertones will all be present in the formula to a very high degree. Like 
just really, really strong color. And there are a lot of people from the very lightest to the very darkest who don't have strong color pigment like that, like really strong yellow pigment, really strong red pigment, or really strong olive pigment in the tones and undertones of their skin. A lot of us are more grayscale. And the thing that this made me think about seeing this Makeup by Mario lipstick release is that that doesn't just extend to trying to find a shade match for a foundation, but also when you're pretty desaturated like I am, desaturated colors work better on you. I mean, really saturated colors can work really well. So I take back what I said. It's not that desaturated colors work better. It's that saturated colors are extremely contrasty. So if I wear a saturated red lipstick, there's an extreme contrast between the level of saturation of my skin. And again, I'm not talking about the fact that I'm very pale. I'm talking about the level of color saturation in my skin. And by color, I mean yellow, red, or green. Right. There's an extreme difference between the level of color saturation in my skin and the level of color saturation in the lipstick. And that can be a beautiful effect, but it's dramatic. You know, with makeup, we like to have a spectrum of whether the product creates a high level of drama or a low level of drama. For example, the lipstick that I'm wearing today happens to be Natasha Denona. Beatrice, I think. I'm not sure about the name, but I'll put it in the description box. It's a very desaturated color. There's a lot of gray in it and not a lot of those color pigments, like those pink and red pigments. So I'm desaturated, it's desaturated, and there's not as much contrast between saturation and desaturation. And so it's working kind of with me instead of creating a lot of contrast against me. And I like to have that option. And I like to have the contrast option, you know, like a really, really bright orange lipstick. I just like to have that option. In this Makeup by Mario lipstick range, there are no desaturated options. All of the colors are very, very strong saturated colors. I would say there's strong saturation and then there's maybe a little bit of a medium in a couple of the colors like Broadway and South Shore, but most of them are really saturated. So it feels like the shade range is very unbalanced. I took one glance at it, I just glanced through it, and I realized I was scanning for a desaturated color, just one, that would make me think, oh, maybe there's something in this shade range that kind of suits me. And I didn't see one and then I just moved on. So I just wanted to bring it up because I've talked about this many a time when talking about complexion. Now that it's more in my head and I kind of understand more what I'm looking for and more what I'm talking about when I talk about color, I realize that it comes up over and over again with color cosmetics too. So to give an example of desaturated color, truly neutral color, I am also going to throw up a picture of this Hourglass lip liner release. There are some light shades, there are some dark shades, there are some shades that don't have as much color in them, and there are some shades that have quite a lot of color, like there's a red. They all look like they're mixed with a hefty dose of gray. This is a good example of desaturated color. It's the kind of thing, this sort of faded quality of color that I feel like the Makeup by Mario range is missing. And I'm just looking at pictures here, so it might also just be the quality of the photography. It might not actually be true. And maybe the Makeup by Mario is full of desaturated colors, and it's just that the imagery, like the advertising imagery, is like amped up the color and made it look brighter than it is. That could be very possible. It could also be that these hourglass swatches look more desaturated than they really are. So I'm, I'm com kind of commenting in theory, I'm talking about color theory. I don't know about these exact products. But the Makeup by Mario, the imagery, it was just too good of an example of a shade range that is giving me nothing. It's a lot of colors, but every single one of them is so punchy. It was just too good of an example of that for me to pass up talking about it. So I wanted to bring it up. And that is it. I have to go. Joe has to get on a call in about two minutes. So that's all the time we have. And I managed it. I got through all of my hot takes. Thank you for watching this video, New Makeup Hot Takes. Let me know about your favorite liquid balms with doe foot applicators. Let me know about your favorite hard eyebrow pencils in dark ashy colors. If you think you'd like to be subscribed and you haven't done that yet, please subscribe. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. I think we got it.